Hey, I'm Adam. I'm having fun. I'm not nervous about this at all. No, no. My name's Adam Newth. I'm 36 years old. Uh, I was born in Detroit, but I live most of my life around Lansing. Uh, I lived here in Traverse City for four and a half, almost five years now. And uh, this is the part where I'm supposed to say I'm a person in long-term recovery. I have been clean since September 1st, 2020. A really long time. Uh, I went to treatment about 14 times. There's uh, it's a saying in one of the programs, people that are constitutionally incapable. Uh, I thought that was me for the longest time. And uh, finally, I had had enough. Finally became willing to do whatever it took. Got involved in a 12-step program uh, while in treatment. I really, you know, took the treatment plan while there seriously. I think my involvement in a recovery community was one of the biggest pieces for me. Getting connected with people who had been clean longer than me, uh, who had gotten through some things and didn't have to use and started building their lives back up and I learned from them how to do it and that it was possible. Getting involved with service work, giving back as soon as I could to help others uh, who were in recovery made the difference and learning how to have fun clean was like the biggest thing, one of the biggest things for me. I don't think anybody gets clean to, to be miserable and I had this, you know, belief that Life was not going to be fun clean, and that's not the case at all. It's way better. Uh, I have more fun now than I ever did using, and I can remember everything I did, and most of the stuff I do I'm not ashamed of. You know, it started with, like, chairing meetings, uh, moved up to, uh, like, area service commitments, like the, you know, governing body of the 12-step the program I'm involved in, and... A huge one for me was activities committee. Uh, they made up some fake position for me while I was still in treatment so I could get involved. And uh, I stuck with it for years. Um, and then I got to be activities chair and then like got to really have like a say in like what events they do uh, around here. And we're pretty lucky around Traverse City, our recovery community is like that that's been a huge part for me just staying active and staying active with the people that I got and was able to stay clean with has been huge too like we all have fun together um concerts have been a huge thing for me I never would have thought you know four plus years ago when I made the decision to stay up here or whatever that Concerts would be a big part of my recovery, but there's like a group of guys. There's like, you know, six of us that depending on the show, like we, we just road trip together and we go to these shows and we do them clean and we have some of the most fun we've ever had in our lives. My last time in treatment uh, up here in 2018, that's when I realized that like I had to be completely done with my old life. And that includes the people in it, you know, I've known some of these guys, you know, since high school and uh, they weren't healthy for me. I had to get selfish, you know, it's a saying in the program, getting selfish for the right reasons. And I finally had to do that because I realized if I had unhealthy people around me, like I could never be well. From what I hear and now what I see at my job, uh, things only get worse. And, you know, when I started at detox, I guess I didn't understand that this position was kind of something I was doing for me, like being selfish for the right reasons too. Like it's a constant reminder that things are not going to get any better if I, you know, stop doing the things that I know got me clean and have kept me clean and in recovery. If I stop doing those, I, I see what's in store and I see people that I was in treatment with five, six years ago coming back and uh, 
you know, for the better part of two decades, that was me. You know, coming back to treatment, it's just this cycle of jail, treatment, recovery, housing, kicked out, jail, homeless, jail again, maybe treatment, homeless. It just repeated, repeated, repeated for so long. And uh, now that I finally was able to break that cycle, like, there's no way, there's no way I'm going back. Like, I'm going to keep doing what got me to this point, like no matter what. And hopefully I can help a few people along the way. Like I had to suffer for a long time before I got it. Uh, and that's what I tell the people I work with. Like, Hey, pick my brain, like learn from me now. So you don't have to go through all the crap that I did. Oh my gosh, night and day. My family want me around for things. Uh, my dad moved out of state several years ago and every year for Thanksgiving, I'm invited there for it. You know, like that, that wasn't a thing. It was like, well, if we do let you in, you're going to come in through the garage. We'll give you a doggy bag and uh, don't be in the bathroom too long and don't wander. Never say never. I mean, like you were saying about family members and giving you money, like my family wouldn't give me money at the end. It was, if I said I needed something, most of the time I was probably lying about it, but it, if they decided to help, it was, they would get me that thing. They would give me the food or the item that I wanted. Like they, there was no trust. Absolutely none. Um, I wasn't on speaking terms with my dad and my stepmom for six months to a year. And then I came to treatment and within the end of treatment, like he took his first phone call from me and I didn't leave this time or I didn't get kicked out of treatment this time. It was like, Oh, okay. So there was like, you know, little, little breadcrumbs I'd leave along the way that snowball effect, you know, put one foot in front of the other, do the next right thing. And I'm not doing it for their approval. I'm doing it. I did it for me. And it was evident in what I was doing this time. It wasn't just words. It wasn't what they wanted to hear. Uh, there wasn't some end, end goal in mind to, you know, shoot a move. It was because I wanted to get better finally. There was no successful way to do this. I tried everything, substitution, uh, rationing, uh, trying to do it every third day, whatever stupid idea I came up with to try to make it work, didn't work. And, uh, I just finally a light bulb, like it finally turned on. Like, they weren't even going to take me into treatment this last time because it was my third time at this treatment center here in less than a year and a half. And the counselor I was going to have came and saw me in detox. And he said, what are you going to do different? Why should we take you this time? Like, why? I said, because I'll do whatever you ask. Like, no hesitation and 110% meant it. And, and I did. Like, sure, I probably, you know, kicked and screamed a little bit along the way. But I finally, something clicked that I didn't know best because... I was back here again. So I decided to do something different. I don't know what necessarily kept me besides m myself. Um, like you said, I had one more paycheck left. Uh, I had one more couch I could crash on. Uh, I had one more relative that I hadn't spun, you know, spun a yarn to, uh, to get something out of, uh, I literally ran until the tank was on E, like exhausting all possible options, like places I could work. And of course I could never work long enough to actually like change anything around. It was just working to get the next one or, or figuring out what I could steal from there to use to get the next one. Uh, I 
think, you know, what keeps people, what, what I've seen is people don't know like the alternative, like they, they've been using and they've been down and out for so long that they don't think recovery is possible. I think, uh, from, from my experience, that's what I, that's what I ran into. Like, I always thought people at meetings were like bullshitting me. Like you can't be this happy and be clean. Like, there's no way you're not drinking and drugging. There's no, there's no way. There's no way. Like, you found the secret formula or something, and maybe if I, like, play it cool and don't come to a meeting all, like, twacked out or falling asleep enough times, you're going to tell me, and then I can use successfully. But that's, that's not the case. Like, these people are, are genuinely happy, and, like, I found that. And, like, I want to give it away, man. Like, this is... This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. And like, I'm in a position that I can share it with people. So I want to do it. Um, but you know, the lack of resources is like a, a huge thing. You know, I think the statistic is 10% of all people in active addiction only ever get to treatment, something around there. And then only 10% of them make it to long-term recovery. And it's just like linking people up with as many possible uh, avenues and outlets to explore recovery, I think, is, is the best thing to help. Whether it be 12-step meetings, whether it be something faith-based, whether it, it be getting, you know, physically active in, in some kind of recovery community. Like just getting linked with other people clean, period, and finding something you enjoy doing, like can make all the difference in the world. At least I found in my experience. the most cliche thing that I ever heard early on that actually like I try to say to other people now is like, if I can do it, anybody can. I, I hated when somebody said that, but I never took the time to like know the people who said that to me and know, you know, how far down they, they fell and then were able to get back up and get like all these amazing things back in their life. Uh, I'm in the position in the next year to, have my son back living with me full time. And I haven't lived with my son in eight years. Um, you know, I have this position here where I'm able to give back and help people. Uh, I might even be able to get my social work license back in the next year or so. I'm getting my record expunged. Like by 2023, I won't have anything on my record. You know, if everything goes like it's supposed to, uh, you know, I have healthy friendships and relationships today that aren't based on like what that person can do for me. Like it's based out of like love and compassion and, and sharing general interests and, and like actually caring about the people around me. Uh, I have a lot of good shit in my life today and I only have it because I'm in recovery because I'm clean and because I've like changed my life around and I've worked to become a better person. If it wasn't for all that, like I would have nothing. So like literally I'm saying that if I can do, like I came here with nothing. I came here with nothing last time I came to treatment. So I really do mean it. Like if I can do it, like anybody can, and it makes me very hopeful. Thanks for watching the recovery spotlight. Watch more videos on the 217 Recovery app and at 217recovery.com. You can edit this, right? Okay, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. that makes me feel awesome.